Sean Sport in podcast form. The Matildas, our Australian women's soccer team, are in action tonight at Marvel Stadium. It's about 55,000 people they're expecting to go along with that. How's that? Women's sport, and particularly the Matildas, they've been successful, yep. but that's great, isn't it? 50, oh, nearly 55,000 people will be at Marvel Stadium. What the Matildas are doing for uh, women's sport is unbelievable. Um, we, You would have been l- probably laughing 10 years ago to think that the world would be looking so closely at a women's team and it being so celebrated. When Samantha Kerr went down to that Lego store in Karen Up, that was unbelievable, the amount of people that went down there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, I do want to say, when we have to go out and do things for Nova, right, so um, a lot of the time you'll have to go and get dressed up to go and do it, it must be such a liberating feeling as a professional sports player just to know you always just got to wear your kit. Oh, it's easy. <laughs> Is that just a mu- And it's comfortable because you're I just, just getting out in your yes. track suit. So I've seen it. Sam Kerr everyone. She's just wearing the same thing. It's like that. And she just ties her hair back in a loose ponytail. It's like, oh, that must be just, oh, that, would be, that must be great. It's going to be great. Yeah, well, it is great. Um, the one thing that I think Australia are really gearing up for is the fact that we could be successful at this World Cup and challenged for the title, which would be unbelievable. And Tony Gustafsson, who is the coach of the Matildas, he says uh, the fact that there's going to be huge crowds and Australia going to be right behind them is going to be a big, a big thing about this whole World Cup coming forward in just one week's time. This World Cup is not just about football and X and Y. So this is about emotional and, and the legacy that these players have already started to create and connect and unite the nation to be excited, to have that bus. It's a little bit more like a, a celebration game in that sense. Not that we don't care about performing well, but it will be a different game in that sense. He's a fun little talker, isn't he? Yeah. It's like um, he really punches every word, doesn't he? <laughs> Very <laughs> he short, sharp little words. But it will unite a nation. Everybody will watch it. Yes. And, and it was the same with the Women's World Cup when it was here a few years ago. The same, same deal. We had about Seventy or 80,000 turned mm. up to the MCG. So it'll be great to get behind the Matildas in that sense and led by Sam Kerr, who you mentioned earlier on, Nathan. And finally, I just want to mention um, the other thing. Joel Hamling is a Fremantle Docker who's about to play his first game for the Dockers in 475 games. Oh. Five days, sorry, 475 days. He had a really bad ankle injury um, that's put him on the back burner, wow. and then he's just tried to get himself right over a number of seasons. So Jeez. 2020 is when he got injured. We're in 2023. So I really hope that he plays well tonight. He got an opportunity um, tomorrow. He got an opportunity because another guy's injured that plays his position. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm just really hopeful that everything goes well for him. I like to hear those stories. What does that psychologically do to you, though, knowing you've been out for so long for one injury? Do you go in there being very ginger about doing it again or do you just forget it and go hard? Because what if it happens again? Well, he's been playing for a long time since coming yes. back from that injury. So the injury is not an issue. Okay. I think the one thing that you'd go back to, Nathan, no matter how many times he's trained with the Dockers, yes. which he has against the those guys who play week in, week in at AFL, you will still have that doubt in your mind. Can I actually do this when you run out to the MCG tomorrow? Mm. So, uh, yeah, hopefully he can settle down. I'm sure his heart will be absolutely racing. I get but, that. But, yeah, I hope he gets through. I get that. Like, after our Christmas break, I... Like, can I do this again? Days, yeah, I go, yeah, can I do this? And yeah. I was like, oh, wait, yeah, anyone can do this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fine. <laughs> it's easy as... <laughs> Jeremy McGovern is in the house. Of course, he's back in action. We saw him last weekend. Uh, he'll be facing Richmond this weekend. Hey, Gov, Lizzo, yeah. Lizzo would be pretty good. What do you think of that tonight? I mean, that yeah. won't, you won't be there because you'll be just taking it easy, I guess. Yeah, well, I missed out on the tickets, so I'm def- definitely not going to be there. But no, um, sorry, yeah, that sound, sounds pretty pretty good fun, really. It's are you going to be great. Are you a concert person? Oh, I, well, I used to be, yeah, but now it's uh, it's pretty hard. Yeah. To actually get to any concerts, but um, love it. Best Absolutely. concert you've ever been to? Oh, actually, it was Big Day. Do you remember Big Day Out? Yes. Yeah. Dizzy Rascal. At <laughs> yeah. Big Day Out. All right, uh, I was. Uh, I jump, jump in the fence. Oh, of course. Way. Yeah, yeah. Jumping the tickets the fence were, back in the day. When the tickets like eighty bucks, and we thought that it was nothing more expensive in the world. Yeah, it was. Than some, it wasn't about the money. It was about the the, the whole experience of yes. getting in there. And, uh, front row at Dizzy Rascal, big day out. Yes. How yeah, good. Dizzy Rascal. Yeah. Where, where was the big day out? This one. Ah, uh, this was Claremont. Claremont. Yeah, it was Claremont. Um, when I was playing at Claremont Colts back in the day. So you knew the weak spots to be able to jump the fence and get in. Well, it seemed a weak. spot. We thought it was a weak spot, and everyone found the same weak spot, and there was about 150 of us steamed a, a fence. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was every man for himself. And, uh, yeah, you, 
Because you go with a group of boys and then um, by the end of it, you don't see each other for half an hour, an hour until your front row of Dizzy Rascal bumping into each other. So. <laughs> That's an unusual um, Eagles training session, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, boys, let's talk this, this was pre-Eagles. Yeah, so this um, that, yeah when you're at the Monts. Yeah, we uh, yeah it was, Dizzy Rascal for me, that was, that was one of my first ones and he was popping off at that time and it yeah. was uh, yeah it was hell of a time i remember um in those i used to go and pick up my mates from the big day outs all the time and they're absolutely just off chops when by the time i picked them up because it's a massive long day yeah and all the time we had training the next morning so i was like oh I'm missing out on this yeah. yeah well i would i didn't sacrifice any train this was on a weekend for yep. us we yeah. didn't play there was none of that but um yeah no it was uh it was good fun I'd, I'd love to go back and, and jump again. So you oh. might you might see me at the next big day. It'll be constant <laughs> trying to launch a fence and try to get in there. And they'll just walk home after that because that's the, the main rush. Yeah, 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 it was such a huge thing for all the country kids as we'd all travel down like you know from Kalgoorlie and um and uh, we'd stop off at Red Dot when we got to um Perth because that was a big deal, and then we'd buy two dollar um sombreros and yep. then that would be our um our group costume situation for the day. It was always hot because of that time of year. It was boiling hot. Boiling hot. It was a good decision. Now, um, Gov, you get to face the Richmond Tigers this weekend. At home, I feel like this will be a really good opportunity, guys, to um, close the gap on some of the opposition you've played in the past. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I I, I think every week's an opportunity for us to get better, for sure. Um, As much as the result from the Lions wasn't ideal, um, they're they're a quality side. I, I feel like we took a couple of steps forward um, in that game, but still still not good enough. But, uh, yeah, got the Tigers this week. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. We've got a couple of the old boys back. And, um, yeah, it, it's a good opportunity for us. And, and it's good. I'm actually just looking forward to running out in front of our fans for the first time in a fair while. Yeah, how's your fitness yourself? Personally, you played about just over 60% yeah. on the weekend. Yeah, I feel great after me. If I played 60% every week, it would be amazing. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't work like that. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I pulled up really well. Um, got through the game fine. and um, So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to up my minutes this week. What's a, what's the key to having ins- real ex- inspiration and gumption to get out there and do the best when everybody's saying how badly the team's going? Is that something you have to conjure up within yourself? Is that something you guys are doing as a team, keeping the morale high? How, how is that? Uh, oh, it's, it, it's it's hard to keep the morale high when, you, when you're obviously losing it's and it's the way, how much we're losing by. Um, but it's, yeah, I guess you just got to get outside yourself. It's not yep. just personally about yourself. It's yep. about the fans. It's about the club. It's about you personally. It's about a lot of, I'm sure everyone's got a lot of different reasons. But, um, yeah, for us, it's a main one for us is just our fans. Yeah, we, we want to get we want to get back on the winning list. And- it, it is difficult to stay uh, abroad of what's happening outside of your own personal battle. Yeah. And Justin Longmy has been talking about this from a Frio point of view as well because you're going out there just going, oh, my God, my job is I'm playing on Nathan. That's it. I'm just, I'm just locked in. Oh, I'm just- you're, you're buggered if you're playing on me. I'm yeah. the best. <laughs> He's a rude dog, mate. You're, He's a rude dog. Thinking three brown low votes on that. Well, you know why I'm the best. You know why I'm the best because you're all playing by one set of rules, and I don't know them. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't, you, can't, you can't tell what I'm about to do. But instead of just locking in on that one person, you got to be aware of everything else and what you need to do as a team. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah so, that's a struggle for uh, not struggle, but that's just part of football for everyone mm. is is trying to do the best you can personally, but also within the team and. Um, yeah, making sure making sure you're contributing on on game day, but also trying to perform at your best as well. You know, Richmond over the journey playing in WA, particularly probably the last four or five years, you've seen Shy Bolton come back here and just dominate every time he plays in Perth. And it's a bit like Frio playing um, Collingwood tomorrow and um, Nick Dacos. Yeah, he's going to dominate. And I feel like why aren't we stopping these guys knowing that they? And I'm going to Shy Bolton. Yep. He's played well against you guys. Yeah. In the past. So stopping the dominators. Yeah, instead of just going, oh, let's just see how it works out and let's go head to head. Yeah, it's a, it's a balancing act because you want, to, you want to try and shut down good players as well, but then also you take sort of one of your players out of your 18 as well, if that mm. makes sense. So it's, it's a balancing act of trying to keep them quiet as much as, they can, as you can, but also trying to get some contribution uh, from that person, keeping them quiet as well. So it's, good, it's a big balancing act. And yeah, the, the taggers have, have certainly sort of left the game at the moment. I have. Can you just look at the TV right now? There is a 100,000-year-old woman doing exercise at a gym. Sean? She is too, yes. She's wearing all black, which is good news. God, Gov, do you reckon that's going to be you? Are you going to work out forever, Gov? 
No. <laughs> <laughs> he can safely say that. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I definitely won't be doing it on TV like that, that's for sure. But um, I'll try and keep myself in good nick and... If I make it to that age, that'd be great. I, I, I was speaking to someone the other day about you AFL footballers, and they're saying, you know, you, like Sean actually, they were talking about you, Sean. They said Sean's given himself um, in, in such good nick. And I said, oh, that's because Sean's terrified of the reaction people get. If they were to see Sean, he's let himself go when they go, oh, oh, Sean. You know, <laughs> that, that Just that often. disappointment look, you know, and they try to cover it up, but you can see in their yeah, eyes, yeah, they're like, yeah. oh, no, what's happened? Yeah. You don't want to ever witness that, do you? No, I don't. And it's a different thing to also, obviously, you look in the mirror yourself. I look, it, it, I've got two different mirrors. There's, d- there's many two different mirrors. mirrors. Two different mirrors. You've got the so skinny mirror and, and the, the mirror. mirror. And I, I go, gee, that's not, I'm looking all right. And then in the other one, I look like a, a, just an absolute mess. It's so where's, really the gro- where's the gross mirror? Um, the gross mirror's in my bathroom. And where's the I good think mirror? I done something to that. Where's the good mirror? Um, there's one up in the kids' bathroom where, where I can go, oh, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm looking fit. And then the other one's completely the opposite. Yeah, where, where do you buy the mirror, the yeah. good mirror? Yeah, because I would I like, can we put an order in for the good mirror? <laughs> 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 Does anyone else find out there? Does anyone else find a mirror that's like that? If I, I, get, if I can order that good mirror, I have it on the ceiling of my house, or my roof, all of it. I think it's called lighting. I think that's what it is. I think it's lighting. Okay, it's lighting. No, it's called Upstairs is darker. There's Sean's new business. Go to him for the good mirrors and the bad mirrors. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.